<laughs> but we rejoice because we did we were obedient, amen. That's what God honors. But we need to pray for those people. By the way, you need to pray for that man that hit Aaron too, man. He needs some prayer. Right? That guy needs some prayer. What's that? Oh, I think it scared him too. I think they were all afraid. In the sense of, in the sense of that what they figured out was that the message will go on one way or another. God will continue to do that because it's the Lord's work. It's not ours. Right. Like, like, yeah, like Paul said, they ain't never seen any Christians like these guys before. <laughs> when, they, when they pulled up there, remember that you were saying that those people never seen any Christians. They never seen any like that before. They're used to like, you know, the little Pentecostal non-binary, you know, dudes, if they're guys. Um, but they, they weren't used to this. Well, but this only tells me that what we need to do is we need to pray more, we need to fast more, and we need to go more. So we need to get the message out to them. And by the way, that's not just going to be there. There's huge events all summer long that we need to get to. And we need to get tracting too. Because while we're preaching, we need thousands of tracks out too. Well, I, well, we got people bellowing out. Do you realize something? I wanted to, and I, I'll get to this sermon. I really will, I promise. But um, do you realize that while we're preaching, we have guys that are tracting everywhere these events, and they're getting out thousands of tracks at events. Ryan, what's one of the number one events that we got, we've got? we gotten tracks out? What's one? Not the state fair, but others, where parades or whatever the case may be. How many have we seen get out at one event? Yeah, use that. 6,000 for the weekend. What about that Halloween uh, how many do we get out up there? Well, there's two times we go to the night parade and the day parade. Yes, that's a lot of people that get tracks. By the way, but that's not all we're doing. We got men preaching while they're tracting. Amen. We're, we're giving them the double whammy there, right? That's right. So that's important. And by the way, you may not be preaching, but you can come tracked. You men, you get out there, you come, You might not preach, but you can tract. Man, you can do it. God will bless that. He does. Amen. We don't know who's going to get saved from those tracks. We don't know what God's going to do. Let's remember that. You don't know what, we don't know what happened yesterday and what God did. We don't know what that, we have no idea what's in the hearts of, what, what, who God is uh, planting those seeds into their hearts and what good ground that fell on. You don't know that. I'll tell you what, you'll get mighty discouraged if you, try to, if you try to use your own arithmetic to figure out what God's doing. But if you just leave it up to God and you just cast that seed liberally everywhere, everywhere, you leave it up to God. You go, he does the saving. Amen. That's the truth. You go and you be faithful. Let me see here. I got to get this thing on. All right. All right. Oops. I know why that's not working. Brains weren't in. There we go. There. The neural link wasn't in. That's right. And this thing, this, yeah, doesn't, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> what does the New Testament say? What the New Testament says about the sodomite and the LGBTQ? So we covered the Old Testament. We went through that, okay? Now we're going to move on to the New Testament. We're going to see what what the New Testament says about that. I'm still not working here. Let me see if I can reset that. Nope, not working. Anyway, that's okay. I'll use this. There we go. What does the Bible say about it? That's the point. That's really, really the point of it all is it's not like, what's your opinion? What do you think about it? What do I think about it? What does God's word say about it? That's all that matters. By the way, did you know that truth isn't isn't submissive to the, how you feel about it. You understand that, right? It's like, well, well, no, there's absolute truth, right? 
which is the word of God. And it really is a very small thing how you feel about that in that sense. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter how you feel about it. Truth is truth no matter what. It's like when you explain to your children that, like, you can't do that because that's bad, right? Well, you know, but I, I don't really feel like this. Well, it doesn't matter how you feel. You have to do right. This is right. This is right. This is wrong. That's the way it is. Well, that's how truth is. The Bible has to be our authority. If anything else is our authority, we will be ashamed. See, I can go out to the street, and you can go out to the street, or we can, in our lives, we can take this King James Bible, and we can, we can preach to people, and if they ask you, why do you live the way you do? Why do you do what you do? I can take this Bible, and I can say, because this is the authority. This is the final authority of everything in my life. This, deter this book determines everything in my life. It determines everything. Amen. That's a very bold statement, isn't it? But, it's, but I can do that and I, I don't have to be ashamed. Why? Because it's God's word. It's not our feelings about this subject. There are people right now that I would, I, I believe are born again Christians that they know People in the LGBTQ, they know people that are, that are lesbians or transgenders or whatever the case may be. And they, because of their feelings for people, they determine how they're going to handle those things by their feelings. Not by truth, but by feelings. By the way, that's a good lesson for anything that you do in life as far as, as, far as that goes. Either you will submit to the truth which is the word of God, or you will give over to feelings. You know what? I went through three years of my life through absolute dark depression. I woke up every day of my life feeling like I had nothing to look forward to, except in, deep down inside my soul, the Lord showed me, you have me still. Yeah, but God, I feel everything bad that someone could possibly feel bad every day of my life. Every day I woke up, it was a dark day. Now, if I gave over to my feelings and how I felt, I never would have got up here and preached. <laughs> I'd have been done. Why? Because, I, because I, would have given, I would have let feelings determine what I do, right? Just like yesterday. I don't think any of us felt good about anything like seeing the wickedness that we see and dealing with that, right? But it had nothing to do with feelings. We are soldiers and we are commanded to be obedient to the Lord and we go. And we do what God has called us to do. That's what we do. We, it doesn't, I mean, if I give in to my feelings, right? That's like your children coming up to you and saying, well, dad, I know you said that I can't do this, but I don't feel like that's a great thing. I feel like I can do it, dad. Well, let me fix your feeler, right? <laughs> I'll straighten out your feeler and then you won't feel that, right? But it really doesn't matter what our feelings are when it comes to that. It's truth that matters most. By the way, it's not our preferences either, in that sense. On anything, it's not, it's not the preferences, it's not our family or friends or acquaintances. You know, I've, I've heard people tell stories about that when it comes to this issue, uh, that they make compromises in their homes and in their families and everything else. And the compromises they make with this, with the LGBTQ and with homosexuality and all those other things is, well, you know, family, friends, acquaintances, those kind of things. Well, that, that's not truth. That, does, that, that's, that doesn't mean that's it. And by the way, it's not pop culture either. It's not what pop culture teaches you. What modern day pop culture or this new evolving Jesus that they preach out there that is not the Jesus found in the Bible. It's, well, it is, he is found there. It's that other Christ, another Christ, another spirit, another gospel. Paul said, let it be accursed. And so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel than that which you have received, let him be accursed. Like that little non-binary, I don't know what it was, but it was out there, and it, 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 I, I'm not being facetious, I really don't know what it was. But, um, and that's really weird, but there's going to become a time where we're going to be like, I don't know what you are. I just, I don't know what to call you. I don't know what you are. Right? I, I don't. Right? I don't know what it is. And I'm not being mean. I'm just, I don't know what it is. They don't want you to know what they are, right? But that's not, we determine truth. We, de, we, we determine what we do by truth. Unless, 
You don't live your life like that. If you live it, if you live your life according to what else is going on, what other people think, what the Jesus that they're preaching out there today. So not everyone that says Jesus, not everyone that saith Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, right? But he that doeth the will of my father, right? So you think when they say Jesus, they're talking about the same Jesus as you. Well, let's just make sure they are. So you go to the scriptures and you see, well, what is, what is the Bible, what does Jesus say? What does the Jesus of the Bible say? That's it. What does the New Testament say about the LGBTQ? What is the G, what is Jesus of the Bible, the son of the living God? Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Every man has a decision what they will make concerning who Jesus is. You, can, you can't, Jesus wasn't just some good prophet, some good guy, some good community organizer, did some good things, was a revolutionary, or all those other things. Whom do men say that I am, he asked the question. Right? Well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say, hey, some say you're a great fella. Man, some say, they say a lot, of, you're, you're a good man, everything like that. Well, I preached a sermon many years ago called Jesus Christ, the good man or the God man. Remember that one, Lee? That was like the third sermon I ever preached here, I think. Well, not here, but yeah, it was. It was, it was, it was like the third or fourth sermon I preached at Old Pass Baptist Church 15 years ago almost. But anyway, that was the, Jesus Christ, the good man or the God man? Was he just a good, he's, he, can't be, he can't be both. He's either the son of the living God, right? Then, then he asked Peter, whom do you say that I am? Whom do ye say that I am? He asked a personal question. Well, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee. My father, which is in heaven. Amen. He revealed it. God showed him. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. By the way, what does the New Testament say about the LGBTQ? The same thing as the Old Testament. We talked about that earlier. It's got the same author, right? But we'll show you the words of Christ. And by the way, like I said here, all the Bible, all the Bible are the words of Christ, not just those in red. All the Bible contain the words of Christ. They are the words of Christ, right? These are the words of Christ. Whether it was written in Genesis 1 or Revelation 22, right? Either way. Hey, it's working now. First Peter 1.10. Let's, let's talk about that. People ask about that, the spirit. Well, those Old Testament prophets and those people, well, First Peter chapter 1, verse number 10 says, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ. I love that. That's the continuity of the Bible right there. That's the continuity of the scriptures. All the way back from the Old Testament, all the way from Genesis 1, all the way on. Right there. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. This is that same Spirit. That's how you know when you look at the Old Testament, people say, well, what about the Old Testament? Uh, the God of the Old Testament is the same as the God of the New Testament. There's no difference. Same God. Let's go to Romans chapter 1. The Bible will talk about, Jesus will talk about in the, in the scriptures, the Apostle Paul here, as he, uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, what he, what he writes here in Romans chapter 1. He's going to explain. Now, I've, I, I kind of covered this, I've covered this many times in different things, but this will be a little different. But I, I did preach a sermon years ago called the blue, A Blueprint for the Destruction of Society. And that was Romans 1. That's, if you want to destroy a society, you just follow Romans 1 and you'll destroy it. You'll kill it dead. I don't care what it is. You'll kill it dead. Because that's what the Lord shows us here. Romans chapter 1, verse number 26. This is what the Bible says about, about homosexuality, the LGBTQ, whatever the case may be in that. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. God does not call that love. Love is love. Yeah, that's right. Love is love. Pizza is also pizza. Right? But that doesn't explain to you what pizza actually is. If I said that to somebody, well, pizza is pizza. You'd look at me like, if you never heard, if you never seen a pizza before, you'd be like, well, that's great, but you're not really explaining what it is. To say love is love, that's not explaining what love is, right? But anyway, what we do have here is 
is vile affections. Vile, morally despicable or abhorrent passion. What they call affection, the Lord calls vile affections. Morally despicable, abhorrent passion. What God calls it. Boy, this you sure won't find this at Rick Warren's church, will you? You won't find this at the at the mega churches this week. They you search you search online on sermon audio and different things like that. Just go and see if anybody's talking about any of these issues in specifics. I ain't touching them with a 10-foot pole. Why? Because they're not popular subjects. They're quite frankly, they're uncomfortable to talk about at times for some people. But by the way, a lot of those things, too, let me say this, their pastors don't go out in the streets either. They don't go out there and confront that. Like, they think all that stuff is hidden in their churches and, like, that's not going to affect them. That's not true. It will affect you. You preach everything to those people. You warn them about everything. Because it will touch you. And you got to have a defense. you got to have the word of God. Morally despicable or abhorrent passions. What they call affection, that's right. Even their women did change the natural use. No babies, no raising children, seeking after lesbian relationships. They left the natural use. That which is against nature. Look at that. For even their women did change. The unnatural, right? It changed the natural use of that which is against nature. It's against the way that you're made. Those vile affections, they're against the way you're made. God didn't make you that way. Whoa, that's bright. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly. Now, I'm going to teach you something about this. I've taught this on my broadcast, and I may have taught it in church, but I'm not sure. But we're going to look at that word unseemly. Okay. Uh, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Unseemly. It's lust, not love. God calls it lust. He never references that which is unseemly as a loving relationship but just absolute brute lust. Brute, lustful, fulfilling of desires. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving themselves that recompense. They left the natural use. They burn in their lust. One to what does God call homosexuality? Burning lust. Vile affections, burning lust. And he calls it unseemly. Look what the word means. Unseemly, not fit or becoming, uncomely, unbecoming, indecent. Indecent. By the way, it's used twice in the scriptures. I'm going to show you the other time it's used. Then you'll understand what the difference in love is, what real love is compared to what homosexuality is or the, the sodomites lifestyle is or the LGBTQ, those are without natural affection. Romans 1.27, likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly. Okay, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 because you're going to see that word unseemly again. It's there for a purpose. Verse number four, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Look at this. Doth not behave itself unseemly. You see that? True biblical love, that true love that God defines, that comes from heaven, right? Doesn't behave itself unseemly. It's not indecent or improper. So what they're describing to you is hate. They're describing a lustful passion, right? Burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly. It's lust. It's indecent, God calls it. And God says it's not love. But they're out there telling you that you hate us because we love. You don't want us to love one another the way that we want to. Well, it's not love. God said it wasn't love. 
That's your, that's your definition right there. It, it proves it right here. This is charity. This is from God. This is the truest love ever, right? Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly. Well, they don't know what love is. They want me to accept their definition of love. And Brother Paul yesterday, <laughs> he was, when he was, when he's, I'll be discreet, Brother Paul, but when, he's, but when he was giving his sermon, he said, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, he basically spoke very crude in that sense, but you have to understand who you're dealing with, and then you'll understand why. Uh, and there's a time for it to be crude. Um, I don't know that I would have said it the way Brother Paul said it, but, uh, you know. But anyway, what he, said, what he said was, is that raping somebody, and I'm, I'm going to be discreet, raping somebody like that is not love. You expect me to believe that that, that without natural affection and in that manner is love, and it isn't love. It, that's not love. That's the same thing he was saying. What is what I'm showing you here? It's unseemly. God calls it unseemly and decent. It's wicked. It's vile. And God doesn't call. But you're telling me I'm wrong for the way I love. No, I'm telling you, God says you're wrong. And it's not love. You don't get to define what love is. God does. He's the author of it. So you don't get to define what love is. God defines what love is, right? Isn't it amazing that there are Christians that, that even in their own families, I mean, we discuss this, right? They, they, they won't talk about this. They won't confront this. They won't deal with that. Family members, brothers and sisters, people they know. Won't deal with it. Why? It's uncomfortable. By the way, this, this LGBTQ stuff, this stuff, it's going to be one of the main affronts to Christianity ever. And it's going to get worse. It is the main one now. One of the main ones. You know, if they continue, the Bible says reprobation comes from that. I don't, I don't know when that is. I don't know when that line is. No one does. We don't know. We don't know any of that. We don't, we're, it's not our job to know that. It's our job to preach the word of God. It's our job Amen. to tell the truth. We don't know. God can save anybody. Amen. God's power can save anybody. But Romans 128 warns that, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they don't want to recognize God in their knowledge. Mm -mm, they don't want to retain them in their knowledge. See, you and I that are saved, if you're a born-again believer here, you, <laughs> everything you do, you, you think, for the most part, you, you think about God when you do it. Like, you, you think about, as a Christian, automatically there's that witness inside of you that you think about what you do. What God thinks about what you're doing. Amen? Right? You think about it, don't you? Man, if I do this, is this a bad testimony? Is this going to hurt my testimony? Or is this, right? Is this going to affect my life? Am I going to hurt people by this? Or am I going to affect other people by this? You know, am I, is this, is this going to hurt my, my walk with the Lord? Is this going to hurt my fellowship with the Lord? Amen. By the way, if you're not doing that, you better start doing that. You better start thinking about that. You better start thinking about the fact that, hey, what is my walk with God? Is this hurting my walk with God? What I'm about to do or how I'm going to talk to this person or how I'm going to react to this situation or, or what, what I'm going to do, you know, what ethics or what morals and, and I'm going to use or if I'm going to walk in integrity with this. I better think about that, right? Amen. 
how I treat my wife and how I treat my children and how I treat my family and how I treat my, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, what I do, do I think about that? Do I, do I retain God in my knowledge when it comes to that? Do I think about God and think about my actions, my business deals that I do, my buying and selling of things, right? The way I deal with things on a daily basis, our obedience to the Lord, our obedience to our parents as children. Husbands and wives, how you treat one another. Amen. How we treat our children. Amen. That matters. Right? That matters. It ought to, we ought to think about that, right? Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. God says they're not convenient. <laughs> We do not deny that all sin continued in a life with no biblical repentance and salvation will lead to reprobation. Oh, absolutely. You can kiss your day of salvation away. That's definitely possible. But when you get to that point, you won't care. You won't care about anything. People say, but I've been afraid of that. Well, that's a good thing. You can be, but just make sure that it's biblical. You're not you're that you're you're afraid of that for the right reasons, right? If you're not saved, now's a good time to plunge in. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Christ is ever merciful to forgive sinners. He's ever merciful to save sinners, right? I'm gonna say this to you. You can feel sorry for yourself, or you can have sorrow. You can have godly sorrow, which worketh repentance not to be repented of. I'll tell you what, if you're looking for answers everywhere else but in Christ, you're not going to find them. You're going to be a mighty miserable person. And I mean as a Christian, somebody that's a born-again believer, if you're, if you're always looking for answers from somebody else, if you're always, if you, if you're always looking for that, uh, you're going to be mighty sorrowful. Right? If you're always looking for validity in something else, you're going to be a sorrowful person. You're, you're, going to, you're going to be full of sorrow. You know where your validity needs to come from? You know, in Christ. You know where everything comes from? In Christ. That's where he comes from. You search Christ. If you're looking for good in you, you can keep looking. You ain't never going to find it. As the Bible says, that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. That's, that's God's word. Man, the longer you're saved, the more you'll come to that. You'll even quit arguing to yourself about it. And you'll just take it to the Lord and be like, Lord, I am wicked as hell. Please forgive me. Right? You just, you won't even argue with yourself about it anymore. <laughs> be like, Lord, please help me. I need it today. Amen. But see, when you start trying to justify yourself and look for answers within yourself, you're never going to get them. You better get them in Christ. Amen. You ain't getting them at all. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Amen. It's God's grace. Look, you know what? There's times as a pastor that I got to look at you, square my shoulders, preach and tell you things that you don't want to hear. But you know what? At the end of the day, if not one person in this room agrees with me, if I know I followed the scriptures and I'm right with God, I will walk out that door and praise God for it. Amen. I'm not looking for justification in your eyes or for you to be happy about something. I'm looking to obey Jesus Christ and follow him and preach the word of God. That's what I'm looking for. If I look for it in you and for you to be happy with me, guess what? You ain't going to be. Because we're all, we're all flawed men that are going to fail each other. That's just the way it goes. But what we better do is focus on who Christ is. And we better make sure that we follow the Lord. Amen. That's what we better do. We better, and by the way, there's another thing here I want to remind us all of. You don't have the option in this church not to love one another. We are going to love one another. We, we don't have that. We don't get to, we are... We are not going to get, we don't get to not love one another, okay? And that we don't act like the world. We don't walk like the world. We're going to love each other through differences, and we're not going to provoke one another to anger, and we're, we're just going to love each other. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get through hard things. We're going to work through them. We're going to walk through them. Amen? And that's what we're going to do. We're not always going to agree. We're not always, things aren't always going to be the way we'd like them to be, right? Never says in the Bible it's going to be. 
But what it does say is, you're commanded to love one another. Amen. There's a lot more at stake than you and I and our little selfish feelings and our pride. A lot more at stake. I look around and I see little 40 little ones out there. We have a lot of responsibility. God's gift, by the way, those children are heritage of the Lord. They're a gift from God. And you have a responsibility. We don't just get to bring them in this world. We have to raise them for Jesus. And we've got to show them what they're supposed to do. And we lead them by example. Which means that we're going to love one another. Amen. We're going to forbear. We're going to be long-suffering. We're going to be patient with one another. And we're not going to push our weight around. Think we always have to have our way all the time. Amen. That was free. That was just, wasn't part of the sodomite sermon, but it was, it was free, but we all need it. Amen. Because I, I, I'm telling you, it's good. Jesus said, marvel not that the world hates you, right? Guess what? After that, he said, but you better love one another. Why? Look around you. You're going to be all you got. Because you think they hate you now? They're going to hate you even more as this world waxes worse and worse. We're going to need one another more and more. Amen? And that means we're going to lay down our pride and we're going to love one another. We're going to get through things. Amen? And we're not always going to agree either. But you'll get right. You'll figure out I'm right in the end. I knew you'd laugh at that. But anyway. Uh, Romans 121. Or 129, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity. I, I mean, if you want a picture of that, I could show you some pictures from last night. Because <laughs> that's, that's what they, they were, you say, preacher, we went and preached to those people and they're horrible. Yeah, I know. He said they're filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit. Hey, you want to debate? Right, that guy asked you. You want to debate? No. We're here to preach the gospel. There's no debating who Jesus is. He's right. You're wrong. Get saved by the grace of God. Amen. That's, that's just it. That's all there's. There ain't no debate about who Jesus is. He's God, right? And he's coming back again. You better get right with him because you definitely don't want to be on the wrong side of that when he comes back. Because when he comes back, we get the reward and you get the fire. That's the way it works. If you're not on Christ's side, you know that guy that was talking about fire and, and burning and all that kind of stuff? He was mocking all that. That guy's going to be, if he doesn't get saved by the grace of God, and I pray God lay it not to his charge, and that man gets saved. I do. Man, he's heard the gospel. How many years, Paul? Five years? Four years? Five years? All that time he's heard the gospel? I hope he gets saved. Man, I'd like to have him on our team, man. I'd like, I'd, we need that guy preaching. You hear his voice? He is loud. Right? Those are the kind of people that God saves, though. Right? And then he uses them. Right? Paul said, I verily thought that I should do many things against Christ, right? That's what he said, and he did, didn't he? And he thought he should do many things against Jesus. That guy right there, you don't think God could save the hardness of sinners? He saved you. He brought you out, didn't he? I'd love, I'd love to see that man get saved and be screaming on that mic. Or he'd give Paul a run for his money on loudness over there, right? You'd be fine with that, wouldn't you, brother Paul? We'd be just fine with that. Amen. Yeah. yeah, that's right. We'd be just fine with that. Don't you think it's beyond God to save those people? Don't you think it's beyond God to save any of those people there? Don't, don't think that. That's a lack of faith. We don't know who God's dealing with. We don't know that. We need to just trust God. Amen. We need to trust God and forbear some things. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Look at that. Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, malicious, man, just angry people. Malicious, mischievous, anger. By the way, some of you, you, you're telling me earlier, brother, about stuff at work and different things that are going on and all that kind of stuff, right? And, and all the, well, it's just the world. That, that's who, I mean, that's who they are. Like, I mean, you're in a substation with them, right? You sit there with them all day long. Well, it's just the world. That's the way they act. They don't act they're not going to act like Christians. They're, they're not ones. They can't even act it. Right? 
you're around them all the time. You're going to be around them all the time. That, that's who they, they, they're just acting like what their nature is. That's the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's Bible. That's, that's who they are. I mean, you should be surprised when God's people do it and be like, you shouldn't do that. We should hold each other accountable and do a higher standard, right? We should look at each other and say, brother, sister, you ought not act that way. That's not biblical. We know better than that. We shouldn't, act, we shouldn't treat each other like that. But don't be surprised when they act that, act that way. Right? That's, that's, the, that's what they have. That's the spirit they have, such as were some of you. I know I was. Backbiters. Man. I'm trying to walk away from them people. Man, you turn your back on people. Haters of God. Oh. Haters. Do you want to know who the true haters are? God says who they are. They're the haters. They call in that that's witchcraft, though. See, when they when people accuse you of things like that, when they and they're they're the ones that are actually doing it, that's what it is. But one thing I learned, learned that the Lord showed me about five years ago, you'll never convince anybody differently that you're not that person. When, when people accuse you like that, don't even worry about it. Just move on because you'll never convince those people that, that are, they, they don't want to be convinced. <laughs> they just, that's what they believe. Well, God says who the haters are. They're haters of God. They're despiteful. Proud. Very proud. Hmm. I mean, they have a flag that says pride. And they fly it. Or they wear it. Hopefully. Uh, they, that's who they are, though, right? Very proud. I want you to think about this. Boasters, inventors of evil things. That's them. That's who they are. They invent things up. We're going to talk about that in a second. Disobedient to parents. I want you to think about this. So you birth a child, bring a child into the world, right? They're a boy. And then all of a sudden, they, 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 that, that boy looks at their parents and says, well, I want to transition into a girl. That's, there you go. There you go. Romans 131, without understanding. I did that. Grandpa, yeah, right? Grandpa's standing there looking out there. Grandpa's under the tree out there. He's chilling while we're all moving around and trying to get something done. Grandpa's like, I'm going to watch here. I'm going to watch this one. So Grandpa's back there watching, right? And he's seeing all this stuff. You get a lot of perspective, don't you, Grandpa, when you're standing back there watching, sitting back. You see a lot of things. You, they're without understanding. He just like, goes right over him. Simple science lessons of male and female go right over them like this. They get enraged. Unless you're talking about abortion. And then all of a sudden, the Democrat Party knows what a woman is. They figured it out. Oh, you mean it only took taking abortion away from you for you to figure out what a woman actually was? A woman's right! Wait a minute, I thought you couldn't define what a woman is a week ago. You said you couldn't define what I'm not a bio. I'm not a biologist. No, you're an idiot. You're just a plain idiot. You're a fool. I'm not senator. I'm not a biologist. Well, you you are a woman, aren't you? I think. Right. But that's. Right? But then, it, then they took abortion away. It's like, oh, poof, we know what women's rights are now. We know what a woman is now. We figured it out. I was only, do you see how crazy and insane that is? And, and you expect, and, and you guys, and these people out there in the world think we're crazy. Wait, a week ago, you said you couldn't even define what a woman is. Now you're ready to burn every city down because you figured it out. See, but God, God said here in the beginning, he made them male and female. This, we're not changing our definition, right? 
We're not, we're not changing. We're, we, it's not ours. It's God's. God defines it. God says what they are. You don't get to say what you are. God does. Without understanding, covenant breakers, right? Boy, are they. Without natural affection. That's why they're dangerous, by the way. That's why they're very dangerous. Very dangerous to have around your children. Now, Pastor, why would you say that? I don't know. Why do you think a dude wants to wear women's clothing and go to a drag queen story time hour at a library? Please tell me why he wants to have little children sit on his lap where he does a fake strip show for them, or a real one. That's why, because that's just weird. That's just absolutely vulgar and perverted. You can't tell me you want to take a little kid's book and you want to read like the cat in the hat to some kid, right? In women's lingerie. Except when I'm preaching out in the streets with all, all our guys sitting out there, you usher your children away from us like we're the scary ones. And then you set them on the laps of a bunch of perverts. A bunch of pedophiles. Because that's what they are. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what they are. Right? And I'll tell you why. Scott's putting his water down. He's like, I'll tell you why. And it won't make you happy. And if you have your conspiracy hat on, you can put it on right now. But your federal government is full of them. That's why. Your federal government runs... The, one of the biggest pedophile rings ever, and that's what they do. And that's why they let perverts go into public libraries and read story time to kids half naked. That's why. That's why they do it. So we're going to do an experiment. We're going to go into the public library, and Brother Andrew and I, we're going to, Brother Paul, we're going to apply for an application or whatever we have to do, and we want to read the history of Sodom and Gomorrah to children at the public at the public library we want to we want to see if we can we can go to the public library because you know i mean i'm sure they wouldn't mind if we read the bible to children at the public library right i'm sure they wouldn't have a problem with that so i want to roll my cameras and i want to take them into the public library and the lgbtq lady down here and especially in being northfield's favorite son i want to go to the northfield public library yes you paul <laughs> certainly Paul, absolutely, abs it would be my honor, Paul, if, if you would come with me to the public library, that we could go there and we could apply or talk or whoever we have to do to set up. And we just, I just want to look at them and be like, well, you know, since, since you let half-naked scary dudes that are dressed like women in here to read stuff to kids and, and Miss Moxie and that Miss Moxie thing that's right around here in the city, um, I put on there, I think I put something on Northfield News' page after that. I said, what a bunch of perverts. I want them to know I'm the only pastor in town that will oppose you. But I will oppose you. I absolutely will oppose you. I will not go silent. You can already ruin my reputation. I don't really care. Please, put it everywhere. I want you to. Put it everywhere. Let it be down in the books that I oppose your wicked perversion to children. Let it be there. Let it be stated very plainly. And that it wasn't just me, but it was an entire church that stood against you. Amen. And by the way, we'll pray against you. And we'll preach against you. Because if you think we're going to just watch you destroy an entire generation, just completely melt it down and destroy it, and rip all their foundations out and so they don't know. No, we have, we have a, many children in this generation. And I'm still here while I got breath. And I'm going to preach until God puts me six feet under. By his grace, of course. So anyway, we're, we're going to go, and we're, we're going to go to the library. And we're going to say, okay, well, since you had your hour, we want ours. 
right? I mean, it is a public, right? I'm sure. Right. Fair and balanced, like Fox News. By the way, Fox News just has the whole, the whole, um, they, they were advertising the whole transgender movement on Fox News. I love how Trump turned the conservative party so gay and everybody just walked around and was like, what's, what's the big deal? Biggest huckster they ever had in the Republican Party. Literally made George Bush look like a child. Came in there and just totally made them look stupid. And they're evangelicals. Enough said. I'm a, I, I'm a Baptist. I'm not an evangelical, just so you know. And I'm one of them old-fashioned ones that still believes the book. Amen? Okay. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Jacob, what was that implacable? What was that definition of that? You did, yeah. And I, I didn't get a chance to look at it. Quality of Yeah, irreconcilable enmity or anger. Like, you can't, can't speak to them. By the way, they're getting so bad in society, this society in America now, that they want to shut up anybody that disagrees with them and that's not willing to participate with them. Yeah, they want to cancel everybody. Just shut them up, shut them down. So they can't say anything. Like when we were at the Pride in the Park and those LGBTQ ladies came up there, and I use that term loosely, ladies, uh, probably women, they came up there and they, and they, they were standing there, they were like, so I think someone said, are they really allowed to do this? I mean, can they really do this? Yeah, it's a miracle lady, but we still can. Don't ask the chief of police that though. He's nowhere to be found. He's... By the way, he's, he kept threatening us that we can't use that. You can't use that. I said, okay. They blast the music. You can't use that. Okay. So we went back and forth at least like 10 times with them shutting the music off and me shutting the amp off. All I wanted, to, like Paul said, we don't want to yell. We'd rather just simply talk. We'd, we, we'd rather preach just like we're preaching. We, we don't, we don't want to, we don't want to do that, but we, we can't, we have to. We don't want to do that. Right? Who knowing the judgment of God, by the way, unmerciful. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Those people were merciless yesterday. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. I want to show you something. This further describes the sodomite. Look at this. Jude. And don't look for chapter 7. There isn't one. Just verse 7, okay? I know I got you, Ryan. I know. Ryan's looking around for chapter 7. Weren't you, Ryan? You were. Yep, he's got his hands up. He said guilty, his charge. Just kidding. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner. Look what it says here about the Sodomite. Giving themselves over to fornication. Doesn't matter what it is. By the way, that word fornication covers everything. Every deviancy. Every, everything out of the bounds of lawful matrimony. Amen. And going after strange flesh. Strange flesh for a man is a man. Right? That's strange. Right? Are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. God's judgment. We're seeing a nation given over to fornication. Sodomy is going after that strange flesh, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's hell, by the way. That's the end for those that will not repent. That's the end. Fornication, uh, the incontinence or lewdness of unmarried persons, male or female. Also, the criminal conversation of a married man with an unmarried woman. Wow. Did you know there used to be a criminal conversation of a, that a married man with an unmarried woman would have? It would be criminal. Do you know that most of the things that were said yesterday out there by those people would have gotten them arrested years ago? <laughs> they would have arrested them. Yeah, not that many. They would have arrested them for talking like that. Right? And by the way, you are, des you are definitely towing the line of, what, of legalities when you start talking about describing 
grab a baby and burn it. You're inciting. That's what he said. You that's that's that is like that's real sketchy as far as saying that you have freedom of speech because you inciting that and calling for people to murder a baby and grab it and to kill it. That's not free speech. That's that's not free. You encouraging people to kill and inciting them to do that. That's not free speech. Like you don't have the right to do that. There's a you don't have a right to call for that. That's I can get you in a lot of trouble, actually, if, if the right people were around. But you, we know Satan protects his own, right? So that's why they weren't around. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Might just get you committed. <laughs> what you would think, right? Yeah, like, you need some help, man. <laughs> right? Uh, anyway, adultery, incest, idolatry is forsaking the true God and worshiping of idols. Adultery, right? Any of that perversion, any of those things, incest, adultery, any of those things, right? Jesus said this, though, in Matthew 5, 27, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So the Bible is, here's what, by the way, that's why fornication is covered in Jesus' words. Pornography is covered in Jesus' words. That, that, that covers that. Why? Because Jesus says, if you look on a woman to lust after her, right? So if you watch pornography, that's what they're doing. You want to destroy your mind and your heart? If you watch that, you'll destroy your mind and your heart. And you'll be like, what happened to this young man a week ago that was taken by pornography so bad that he took his own life? It's not a game. Right? Not a game. That messes people's minds up forever. It, you never be the same again. It's not, it, those, those images and those things in your mind, they never go away. They don't. Keep your mind pure. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your walk pure. Don't, don't, don't. Don't mess around with that. Don't mess around with pornography. It's not a game. It's not an alternative. It's fornication. Don't play with that. You're playing with fire. That, 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 that pornography, Jesus said, you have heard that it was said of them, old thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Jesus said, you're guilty of that. That has a lasting effect. Remember, mine eye affecteth mine heart. It affects you. It affects you for the rest of your life. You'll never be the same. Ever. Keep, your, keep yourself off. By the way, this is why young men, young women, should not have internet access unsupervised. They should not. Should not. Don't do that, right? I told people, and, and, and I know we're talking about sodomites here, but I, I told people earlier on my broadcast, I said, this is a portable pornography device. It's a portable porn device. If it's in the hands of a child, or it could be for anybody, but if it's in the hands of a child, it's a portable pornography device. That's what it is. It, I, I trust my kids. Yeah, Pornhub. Pornhub. Yeah. So, and they're making billions of dollars off of it. And by the way, I understand the temptations that are there. I get it. Young people are tempted because this world is full of it, right? This, it's putting it everywhere. Man, I was looking for images for this. And they, and they had all these Catholic naked images of like statues and pictures and all this other i'm like why do you even have this i say roman i don't know if it's catholic but greek or roman whatever just a greek or roman that's probably what it is but anyway they have all the and i'm like oh you know i'm like what does that have to do with what I'm, nothing at all and the safe image is still on you know the safe image thing is still on you can be defiled by anything 
But the flicker rates and the things that are in pornography, the 3D images that are there, all those things that are there are very dangerous. They're very dangerous. The flicker rate to the mind, everything. You can go back and listen to those sermons that I preached on pornography. They're actually the number one sermons that are, that are hit on Sermon Audio for my sermons, besides the one C.S. Lewis one. The rest of them are, are on pornography. It's a real problem. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Virtually. It, virtually. And that's what that's the rise of that that's happening. That's the, that. And it's stuck in their mind. That's right. Flee youthful lusts which war against the soul. Right? Keep your eyes and your mind pure. God will have you uh, be married one day and, and, and you'll have a, a husband or a wife and you'll do, you, you wait for the Lord. You wait on the Lord. You don't, you don't allow anybody to put, uh, I will set no unclean thing before mine eyes. Amen? Do not set it before your eyes. Don't do that. Keep your mind and heart pure. That, by the way, they're, they're basically predators and everything online to defile children. That's, they, 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 that's what they do. That's what they do, and they will defile you. Don't, don't trust them. Say, well, I trust my children. I tr no, don't trust them. There's predators on there. They're, they're, they're the ones that are going to put that on there to defile. Right, don't trust the devil. That's right, ever. He's always looking for a way in. Jude says this, likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, speak evil dignities. The Bible calls them filthy dreamers. You hear the, their words and what they say and the filthy things in their imaginations and in their mind, right? That, that's their evil imaginations. That's their wicked imaginations, the Bible says. That's the trait of a sodomite. That's what they have. They're, they're just constantly filthy. Filthy dreamers. That's what they are. When we're on the streets witnessing them, we hear about that, right? We hear their filthy dreams, their imaginations, how they dream up wickedness. They look at you and they accuse your wives or your children or your family of doing all these wicked things. Because that's what's in their heart. Lee said that a couple weeks ago when we were at that event. Man, they, they, that's all that comes out of their mouth well, because that's all that's in their heart. That's all they have in their heart. Filthy, filthy dreamers. All that's in their heart. Sad. Very sad. The Bible says, A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. They have a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. They sit and they devise those things. They think about those things and they meditate on wicked things. That's what they do. That's what pornography and all those things do, by the way. It's, it's a meditation on wicked things. And by the way, it's an exposure to homosexuality, too. That's what pornography is, too, as well. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. We talked about that proud look earlier, right? Pride, right? They despise dominion. What do you mean by that? Well, let's leave out federal government, civil government. Let's just talk about the dominion of the Lord and what God has showed. What do they hate? The order of the sexes. Absolutely hate it. They hate male and female. They hate it. They hate babies and they support abortion. By the way, that's synonymous. You can't change that. You either love babies and are against abortion or you hate babies and you support abortion. There's no difference. You, you can't. You, you, I, I know it sounds bad, but you can't, you can't separate those. You just can't do it. Right? I, I remember somebody... Uh, somebody Mentioned to me, a member of the church mentioned to me that somebody asked him, well, well, how many kids you, you're going to have? I said, well, you ought to look at them and say, well, which one of your grandkids don't you want around? Because that's just weird. Like, what are you, Margaret Sanger? What's your problem? What, you don't think I'd look at somebody and say that? I absolutely would. I'd look at your parents and say that if they said that to you. I'd be like, what are you, Margaret Sanger? What, are you working for Planned Parenthood? What's your problem anyway? It's sick, the mentality that's come over this nation now. 
that they don't look at children as a blessing and a heritage of the Lord. They look at them as some kind of expense and curse. What's that? What's that? Volunteering for Planned Parenthood. You're not even getting paid to kill babies, right? Exactly. Exactly. Right. That's because you live in an entertainment-driven nation where they're fun in their games. Pleasure, uh, ple uh, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. <laughs> they don't care about people. They don't, they don't want to. You ask me, well, how many children are you going to have? As many as God lets us. I don't open and shut the womb. God does. I'm not God. Amen. They hate male and female traditional roles. They hate the traditional biblical family. By the way, you are the most hated entity on this earth. Never, besides the Lord's church, right? The, the, the biblical family, absolutely hated. Absolutely hated. By the way, they hate the Bible and the church too. They despise dominion. Why? Well, because God's in charge of this. God's in charge of the family. God's in charge of the roles of the male and female. God, uh, God's in charge of making babies, right? Of having babies. That's all God's dominion. God rules over that. They hate it. They absolutely hate it. And by the way, when, when, when Baptist churches start preaching Planned Parenthood's talking points, that's pretty scary. When you start hearing church members start talking about how maybe you, uh, you know how that happens, don't you? And say things like that's like, since when did you become Margaret Sanger? But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally is brute beast and those things they corrupt themselves. Brute beast. Look at the definition of that. We're almost done here. Senseless, unconscious as the brute earth, irrational. Brute beast, bestial in common with beast. Brute violence, rough, uncivilized, insensible. God says they're like brute beasts. Sound like yesterday a little bit? A brutal person, a savage in heart and manners. They <laughs> call he calls it, Webster calls it a low-bred, unfeeling man. <laughs> wow. Anyway, I think that's it. But anyway, that's what the Bible, that's, that's from start to finish, that is pretty much what the Word of God says about that subject. And obviously we know what the end is. But listen, the Bible also has hope because it says in 1 Corinthians 6, such as were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. Ye are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus. Those people can be saved, right? Those people can be saved. Paul said he had effeminate, former men that were effeminate in his church. They were abusers of themselves and mankind in Corinth, right? They had all manner of wickedness in that port of fornication in, in, in Corinth. But the Lord still saved them and changed them, made them new creatures. They were different. Amen? So this gives you an idea. This gives you an understanding scripturally all the way through. You see the definition is the same. Paul describes it, uh, some things a little bit in more detail as he describes it in the New Testament uh, and in different passages and what Jesus said. But it helps you to understand exactly what God says about that movement and that God's people have no part in shaking hands with it. In, and, and that's why there is no sign. They said, somebody, that one guy said that punched her in the face that, uh, oh, all are welcome, right, at your church? It's like, no, all are not welcome. No, I mean, you're not welcome if you want to come in here and defile people and you want to be dirt. No, you're not welcome. Why? This is, a, this is a private assembly. We're not public and we're not a nonprofit organization. I don't have to have any stinking rules up there because I'm not a corporation. I'm not a 501. We're not a 501c3. We don't have any pay. We're not a 508 church. We never asked you for anything. We don't have the co a constitution and bylaws because we're not a corporation. Well, what's going to protect you? The Bible. God's word, that's what's going to protect us. We don't have any of those things. That means that we just say, no, you can't be here. This is private. That's that easy, right? Because we're not a corporation. 
And we don't have to be concerned with how we 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 ha- we say things and handle things when it comes to that because of the the corporate liability. Like there's churches right now that had perversion in them and different things that went on, and the pastor or I mean the men that are standing in might preach or bring that that up to them, and they pull the sermon offline. Why? Well, they're a little concerned with the corporation and the liability of everything. Sure they are. Sure they are. You, they agreed to the paperwork and they signed up for it, right? This is a private assembly. This is a church. Amen. Praise God for it, too. All right. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, thank you that any man can be forgiven of sin, that Christ has power on earth to forgive sins. If someone will seek you, they will find you if they search for you with all their hearts. That, Lord, you will save the vilest of sinners as you saved all of us from the uttermost to the guttermost, Lord, you are well able to save every sinner and, and forgive their sins and make them new. Oh, God, help us to believe in the changing power of the gospel. Help us to live it in our lives. Help us to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Help us to stand separated in this world. Our church is to be separate. We're not to be defiled by the world. We're not to be yoked with the world with unbelievers. We're not to be yoked with the wickedness of this world. We're not to be yoked with the sons of Belial. For what concord hath Christ with Belial? None at all. Help us, Lord, to live our lives daily in purity and sanctification. Lord, protect these children, these men, these families from pornography, from wickedness and smut online, from adultery, from fornication, from wickedness. Help us to walk in purity. Help us to trust the Lord the Lord, help us to read the Bible, help us to have our hearts cleansed daily, help us to keep a short sin account, getting things right with you daily, help us to set no unclean thing before our eyes, help us to follow you in spirit and in truth. Dear God, protect your people by the power of the Holy Ghost of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.